Heard a lot about masks in Affinity, but don't quite understand what they do or how to use them. Given their abstract nature, they can be rather mysterious. This video will help dispel their mystery and replace it with a clear understanding. So let's get started. I'll begin by explaining the basics, and then we'll use Affinity Photo to work with some concrete examples. Masks in everyday life cover faces, hide identities. That's sort of what masks do in Affinity. A mask in Affinity does either of two things. It hides something by making it invisible, or it allows something to show through and be visible. So a mask makes whatever it's applied to either invisible or visible. There are two basic masks in Affinity, a black mask referred to as an empty mask, and a white mask referred to simply as a mask. Affinity Photo 2 has added additional types of masks, which won't be covered in this video for the sake of simplicity and clarity. An empty mask or black mask makes whatever it's applied to invisible, like there's nothing there, just empty space. A mask or white mask, however, allows whatever it's applied to to show through and be visible. An empty or black mask conceals. A mask or white mask reveals. In addition to their concealing and revealing properties, masks are also an invisible sheet which can be painted upon. But they're not painted on with any color, just white black, or any shade of gray. Black paint conceals or makes invisible. White paint reveals or lets what's beneath show through and be visible. And all shades of gray are somewhere in between. Let's illustrate. Here's a yellow circle on a dark pink background. Let's apply a mask or white mask to the circle. Since a mask or white mask allows whatever it's applied to to show through, nothing has changed, visually speaking. But there is a mask there. So that means there's an invisible surface we can paint upon. What would happen if we took a brush and applied some black paint to the mask? Remember, black paint conceals or makes invisible, just like an empty mask or black mask does. So that means that wherever we apply black paint on the mask, those areas will in effect become an empty mask and whatever is directly beneath those areas will become invisible. So let's take some black paint and paint a line down the middle of the circle. The circle has been split in half, and we can see the dark pink background where the black paint was applied. In other words, that part of the circle is now invisible because the area of the mask where the black paint was applied has been transformed into an empty mask. But we've only painted on the mask. The circle is still whole. Let's remove the mask. And there is the circle, fully intact. Now, what would happen if we applied an empty mask to the circle? The circle has disappeared. The space where it was is empty. An empty mask makes whatever it's applied to invisible. Let's try painting a white line down the middle of the empty mask. A yellow line has appeared down the middle of the mask, revealing that part of the circle underneath the white paint. The area of the empty mask that's been painted white has acquired the properties of a mask or white mask and has allowed what's beneath to show through. Let's remove the empty mask and put a mask or white mask in its place. Because a mask reveals, the circle is fully visible. Now let's try painting with gray. Gray is neither white nor black, so it doesn't reveal completely nor conceal completely. It's in between. Darker shades of gray being closer to black conceal more than they reveal, and lighter shades of gray being closer to white reveal more than they conceal. Let's paint some dark gray paint over the circle to illustrate. The circle is very faint, almost invisible, but not quite. Let's try a lighter shade of gray. The circle is noticeably less faint. As we get further away from black, more of the circle will be revealed. Let's try an even lighter shade of gray. The circle is now almost fully visible. It's important to remember we're only painting on the mask. The circle underneath is unaffected. We're only changing the properties of the mask, making it more or less revealing, depending on the color of paint we apply. Let's remove the mask. And there's the circle, untouched. Now let's go to Affinity Photo and work with some concrete examples. In this tutorial, I'm using Affinity Photo version 2.0.3. We'll start with a graphic image and then work with two photographs. Here's an image consisting of two pixel layers, one for the background and another for the star. Let's select the pixel layer containing the star and apply an empty mask to the layer. To do that, click on the tiny square icon with a black circle in the middle underneath the layers panel and select Empty Mask from the drop-down menu. Or, select New Empty Mask Layer from the Layer menu. A 
black square has appeared beside the star pixel layer thumbnail in the layers panel, and the star has become invisible because we've applied an empty mask. Clicking on the pixel layer will reveal the empty mask underneath. Let's turn it off. The star has reappeared. Turning the empty mask back on will cause the star to disappear again. I'm going to take a white brush and paint on the empty mask layer. It's important to first make sure the empty mask layer is selected, otherwise we'll be painting directly on the star pixel layer. I'll select the paintbrush tool and set the color to white and set the opacity, flow, and hardness of the brush to 100%. I'll paint some random strokes. The areas where I've painted over the star have revealed it. I'll keep painting, revealing more and more of the star. White paint like a mask lets what's beneath show through. Now I'll change the brush color to black and paint on the mask some more. I've completely erased the star. Black paint like an empty mask makes what it's applied to invisible, but the star is still there. Let's turn off the empty mask, and there it is. I'll turn the empty mask back on. I'll now change the brush color to a dark shade of gray. Now when I paint, the star is revealed, but only faintly. Let's try a lighter shade of gray. The revealed parts of the star are much more visible. Let's delete the empty mask layer, making sure it's selected. Click on the trash can underneath the layers panel, or select delete from the layer menu. There's the star, back to its former glory. Now let's apply a mask to the star's pixel layer. Make sure the star's pixel layer is selected, and then click on the mask icon and select mask from the drop-down menu, or select new mask layer from the layer menu. A white square has appeared indented beneath the star pixel layer. The star is fully visible because a mask allows what's beneath to show through. I'll change the brush color to black and draw a line across the star. That part of the star has disappeared. I'll change the brush color to white and fill in the invisible part. Now I'll change the brush color to a light shade of gray, and I'll reduce flow to 40% and set hardness to zero. I'll paint over the star, slowly causing it to fade. Let's turn the mask layer off so you can see the difference. I'll delete the mask. But to apply a mask to all of the layers, first deselect the currently selected layer by clicking in the empty space underneath the layers in the layers panel. If you can't do that, simply drag the new mask layer to the top of the stack. I'll demonstrate in a moment. Let's apply an empty mask to the entire image. The image is completely gone. I'll paint over it with a light gray brush. Again, I'll make sure the empty mask layer is selected. There's the image partially reappearing. And if we turn the empty mask off, we see that the image is unaffected. It's only the properties of the empty mask that we're changing, causing it to be more or less revealing, depending on the color paint we use. Now let's work with a photograph. I think fog would be a nice touch for this photo. We can do that easily with masks. First, I'll add a new pixel layer by selecting New Layer from the Layer menu. Using the Flood Fill tool, I'll paint the new layer a light gray. Now I'll apply a mask to the layer and make sure it's selected. I'll select the paintbrush tool, reduce its flow to 15%, and make sure hardness is zero, and set the color to a dark gray. Since I'm using a dark gray color, the new pixel layer will become more transparent, simulating the appearance of fog. Adjusting the shade of gray allows me to paint in more or less fog. I'll turn the mask off. You can see that the new layer is untouched. I'll delete the mask and apply an empty mask to the pixel layer. I can also add fog by using a light gray color and making the pixel layer more and more visible, like so.
Either approach works. I'll delete the pixel layer and empty mask. Masks can also be applied to adjustments in live filters. I would like to increase the brightness of the grass in the foreground, so I'll add a contrast and brightness adjustment. Adjusting the brightness, I can see the foreground looks good, but the rest of the photo is too bright. I can limit the effect of the brightness adjustment to the foreground by using a mask. I'll add a new empty mask. By default, the mask has been placed at the top of the layers panel, affecting everything beneath it, with the result that the photo has become invisible. But we only want the empty mask applied to the brightness and contrast adjustment. To do that, drag the empty mask layer with the mouse and hold it over the brightness and contrast adjustment until its thumbnail becomes highlighted and release it. The empty mask is now indented beneath the brightness and contrast adjustment. The photo is visible again, but the brightness adjustment we made is gone. That's because the empty mask has made it invisible. Making sure the empty mask is selected, I'll use a white brush to paint in the brightness adjustment in the foreground only. I'll increase the flow to about 50%. I can also touch up the tree. If you make a mistake, you can change the brush color to black to undo your mistake. You can also use a shade of gray for a more subtle effect. We can still alter the brightness and contrast adjustment, but now its effect is limited to the areas we painted with a white or gray brush. Here's another photo. The foreground is too dark, so I'll apply an exposure adjustment to brighten it up. The rest of the photo is now overexposed, so I'll limit the exposure adjustment to the foreground by using a mask. Making sure the mask is selected and using a black brush, I'll paint across the sky and city skyline to block the exposure adjustments effects from those areas. First, I'll set the flow to about 50% to make sure hardness is set to zero. Around the trees, I'll use varying shades of gray for a more natural look, avoiding a sharp divide between the bright foreground and the rest of the photo. The sky looks a bit dark, so I'll go over it with a dark gray brush to allow some of the exposure adjustment to show through. Now I'll use a curves adjustment to make the buildings in the background stand out more. First I'll set the blend mode to luminosity. Now I'll use an empty mask to limit the curves adjustments effects to the buildings only. Using a white brush I'll paint over the buildings to reveal the curves adjustment. First, I'll make sure the flow is set to about 50%. I can vary the size of the brush as needed by using the square bracket keys. The trees are still a bit dark, so I'll touch them up by painting on the Exposure Adjustments mask again. I'll use a light gray brush to paint over the trees, allowing more of the Exposure Adjustment to show through, but first I'll reduce the flow to about 40%. That's better. 
And that's the end. I hope this video has given you a clear understanding of masks and that you'll be able to use this knowledge to advance your editing skills. Thank you for watching.